are so glad that you can be joining us on online worship at McCrunchy UMC. Wherever you are watching from, we invite you to prepare a worship space along with us lighting candle, having a Bible handy, and singing along with our songs you see on the screen. We also printed we also printed these children's activity pages from the church web from the church website. We are so glad we can worship with you today. chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise but who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah is roaring with power and fighting my battles every knee will bow sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lightning land oh every knee will bow before the
to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt boys and girls. I'm glad you're here for today's children's moment. I wanted to start by asking you if you have ever grown something, uh, planted something in your house or in your backyard that grew into something beautiful. Maybe it was a, a beautiful flower or of something in a garden where you, you got to eat something out of a vegetable garden or something else. You know, it's a lot of fun to plant things, but there's a lot of work too. You know, to make a plant grow, you have to have a lot of things, don't you? You have to start, of course, with, with some good seeds. And here's some seeds that I have here that I can, I can plant. You also have to have water as well. This is a, just a little where I can water the plants that I'm planting. And you also, of course, have to have sunlight. Oops. Never look directly at the sun, boys and girls. It's not good for your eyes or for your phone. But what did I leave out of this? Seeds, water, sunlight. What did I leave out? Soil, right, dirt. You need dirt to be able to plant the seeds in. 
Now, can you just plant seeds in any kind of dirt, though? What about this kind of red clay that I've got here that has just, you know, it's just this red clay that you see. Can you plant stuff in that? It doesn't really do very well, does it? Red clay, uh, Georgia red clay, just doesn't work real good to plant things in. So what would you need to make this, you to make this into good soil? You gotta have good soil, don't you? You gotta have seeds, you gotta have water, sunlight, but you have to have good soil. What would it take to make this ugly dirt into good soil? Well, to have that, you have to have something like fertilizer, like a potting mix or something like that. I have some potting mix here that has some fertilizer in it. And if I mix the nutrients in with all of the soil and the dirt, the bad dirt, it's going to actually make a much, much better type of soil that a plant might grow in. So I have to mix this together with all the nutrients and all the soil. It's what we can find that will actually grow something in. You know, Pastor Paul, a little bit later on in today's sermon, is going to talk about being good soil and how you and I, God wants us to be good soil so that he can plant his word in our lives. One of the ways that we create good soil out of our lives, just like this dirt here, creating, adding nutrients to it, one of the ways we do that is by reading the Bible. The Bible is one of the ways that God gives us, it's a nutrient for our lives. In fact, the scriptures sometimes are referred to as the bread of life. And so when we're reading the Bible, whether you're having your parents read it to you or whether you're reading it yourself, it's a way for you to take in the nutrient of God's word. I want to encourage you and just invite you this week to make sure you're reading your Bible or to have your parents read it to you and read the stories about God so that you are receiving the nutrients God wants so you can be good soil. Let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for your presence in our lives. Thank you for your Bi the Bible that, that gives us nutrients to be good soil for you. Teach us to love you and serve you by the way we live our lives. Let our lives be good soil for your word and for the, wor the lives of others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a great week.
please join our hearts and mind with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill this sanctuary with your presence. Jehovah God, we bless your holy name. We magnify your name, O Lord. We worship and give you praise. We thank you for the blessing of seeing this day. You are holy, Lord. Great is your name and greatly to be praised. You are the one and only true God of Israel. There is no other God but you, Lord. Excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, we are thankful for your divine love by sending your only son Jesus to die for our sins on the cross of Calvary. We come to you with penitent hearts, Lord, because Lord, you said sacrifices you do not require, but a broken heart and a contract spirit, Lord, you will not despise. And so we bow our heads and our hearts before your throne of grace this morning to confess all of our sins to you. Father, we have seen in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. Forgive us, Lord. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. Search our heart, Lord. Reveal to us areas of unconfessed sin and cleanse us from all of them. We bring all of our cares, our worries, our anxieties, and lay them at the altar, Lord. They are just too heavy for us to carry by ourselves. So we surrender all of them to you, Master. We surrender them to you because you promised, Lord, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So, Lord, carry them. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Father, oh, Father, we lift our country up to you in prayer this morning. We pray for the health of our president, his family, and all of those who have been affected by this deadly disease. Father God, you promised that when we trust you, Father, you will come like a son of righteousness with healing in your wings. So we pray for healing, Lord. Father, save us from ourselves. Have mercy. Give us heart of tolerance. Lord, help us to be humble. Help us to seek your face, Lord. Father, you promise us if we seek your face, Lord, you will hear our prayer and heal our land. Father, we are standing on your promises this morning. Lord, we worship you. We bless you and we thank you for our beloved church, McKendrick, and all of his members. Lord, we pray for the leadership of this church and the staff of our church. Equip them, Lord, in every good thing so that they can be able to serve us and lead us in the right direction. Father, oh Father, we pray for the emotional, physical, and spiritual needs of our members. Fathers, Father, we have members that are battling diseases on the beds of affliction right now. We have members that are sad, that are isolated, that are depressed, that are scary. Oh, Father God, have mercy. Lord, give us your inner peace. Remind us, Lord, that you are our healer. Remind us, Lord, that you can heal us from all our diseases. Remind us, Lord, that you can supply all of our needs. Remind us, Lord, of your precious blood. We pray, Lord, that you bless our worship today. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to hear from you <clears throat> as you speak through your servant, Pastor Paula, this morning. Lord, set our hearts on fire. Renew us, O oh God, with the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray all these things to your only and precious Son, Jesus Christ, our comforter, our healer, our intercessor, the great 
shepherd of the sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. McKendry Church. You know, we are so blessed. Our church is thriving and growing even in the middle of all of this confusion and pandemics and problems. And we are so blessed. To, October is Stewardship Month at McKendry United Methodist Church. Stewardship is a gift from God. It enables us to give of what we received, to help others to please God. And stewardship is something that is prevalent in the world today. In business, many corporations give back to the community, to their nation, and even to the world through their gifts and their presence. In our lives, we exercise stewardship by being grateful for what God has given us and taking excellent care of it. We are called to be stewards of our bodies, of our minds, of our spirits. We're called to be good stewards of our children, teaching them to love God and others. We're called to be good stewards of our pets, plants, property, possessions, of our finances, and also of our relationships. In our church, stewardship allows us to serve God and others through our gifts, tithes, talents, prayers, and time. We can do this in many ways. We can go to our um, website and we can tithe through our website. Not only tithe our money, but we can tithe our time and our talents by volunteering, by praying for others. And we can also be good stewards of our personal and spiritual growth by becoming involved in groups and by taking Sunday school classes and with virtual Bible studies. I would uh, re recommend that you join the pastor's Bible study. It is excellent. We can also pray by using the drop box that the church has. It's located next door to the fellowship hall. You can drop a check in there or you could go right around the corner to where the um, preschool drop off is and leave a present or a donation for the Lawrenceville Co-op. You can also make your tithes through the mail. 
you could send a check through the mail to McKendry, or you could send a card to someone who has recently lost a loved one, or someone who was ill, or had surgery, letting them know that you love them, that God loves, loves them, and that you're praying for them. You can also tithe through your phone. You can text your tithe to your phone. Or you could phone a church member who you haven't seen for a while and let them know that you're praying for them and reconnect. You can also go to your bank, which is my favorite way of tithing, and add, your, add the church as a payee and tithe through the bank. You can also send a check to a starving college student to, to encourage them to continue, even though it's hard, or send a contribution to the Lawrenceville Co-op. Stewardship unleashes our potential to do and to give more. And scripture tells us that is, there's a reward for that. Luke 6, 38 says, if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, and running over. Whenever, whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So the promise of good stewardship is that God will bless your efforts to overflowing. Let us pray. Precious Lord, thank you for this church, for the vibrance, the vibrant spirit of this church. Help us, Heavenly Father, to be good stewards of all that you've given us. Thank you for unleashing our potential to do more, to have more, and to give more through our gifts, our tithes, our talents, and our prayers. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer, and all the people say, amen. Our scripture reading today 
is from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 3 to 9, verses 13 and 14. The parable of the soils. We'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Hear these words. Listen to this. A farmer went out to scatter seed. And as he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and birds came and ate it. All the seed fell on rocky ground, where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. When the sun came up, it scorched the plants. They dried up because they had no roots. The other seed fell among thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked the seeds and they produced nothing. The other seed fell into good soil and bore fruit. Upon growing and increasing, the seed produced, in one case, a yield of 30 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. In another case, a yield of 100 to one. He said, whoever has ears to listen should pay attention. 13, do you understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The farmer scatters the word. The word of God for all people Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Thank you, Brother Russell. You're welcome. Thank you so much. God is good and so worthy, worthy, worthy of our praise. And I'm so glad that you've joined me this morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you've decided to tune in um, to hear what thus saith the Lord. If you could, please um, pray with me. Uh, Before I approach um, this word, most gracious Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the word that you have placed in my heart and in my mind. And I thank you, Lord, for this church family here at McKendree. I thank you for all the listeners, all the hearers, all the doers. I ask, Lord, that you would hide me behind the cross and that only your word go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today and where we're starting, the book of Mark. At Mark 1, it says, the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's son. And as the book starts, Jesus is amassing many followers. First, John is out in the wilderness. He's announcing the coming of Jesus and that he is preparing a way of the Lord. Then John baptizes Jesus Jesus calls and recruits his disciples, and his ministry begins to spread. There are miracles and healings, the giving of forgiveness. Jesus is eating with sinners, teaching on fasting, teaching what is important when it comes to observing the Sabbath. So up to this point in Mark, Jesus is doing a lot of the work. And then we find ourselves at Mark 4, and Jesus is teaching. Picture the scene. Jesus has been followed from town by a great crowd of people. Some some Bible verses use the term multitudes. There are so many people that Jesus has to get out on a boat and go out on the lake. Now, we say the Sea of Galilee, but actually... The Galilee is really a large lake with hills that rise up from the shoreline. And the lake shore, with the hills rising up, in my mind, would create an amphitheater effect. So you have this amphitheater effect, and the crowd would have seen the farmers farming in the hillside. Why were so many people there? Why was there a multitude? I think they'd heard about this rabbi, this teacher named Jesus, who was doing all of these great things, healings, miracles, feeding the poor, eating with sinners, and they were looking for some good news. 
And Jesus shouts out, listen, listen, pay careful attention. What I'm about to say is important, and you need to hear it. It's important for our lives. And what they get is a parable. What did he just say? You know it went by real fast. A parable, remember, it's only six verses long. A parable is a short teaching that conveys spiritual truth by making a vivid comparison. The truth to be taught is compared to something in nature or something common in life. A parable draws the hearer to take part in a situation, evaluate it, and apply that truth to themselves. So let's look at a modern day example. Would Jesus teach us about how we should hold on to God's word like we hold on to our cell phones? Maybe he would work a comparison about how we should hold on to hope like we hold on to our phones or how we should hold on to joy like we hold on to our phones or love like we hold on to our phones. Two weeks ago, Kimmy said, can you hear me now? Verse 9 says, whoever has ears to hear should listen and pay attention. So now in many of the Bible versions that I read, this section of scripture is called the parable of the sower. But in the common English Bible, it's entitled the parable of the soil. The things that are consistent in the parable are the sower and the seed. So Jesus tells us in verse 14 that the sower spreads the word. So the seed is the word. So what's the variable? The soil. In Genesis 2, 7, it reads, the Lord God formed the human from the top soil of the fertile land. We're the soil in this parable. God is sowing God's word into us. So what's the fate of the seed in the different types of soil? What's the fate of the seed in you? Is your soil hard, rocky, thorny, or rich dirt? And if it's not rich dirt, and you know, nobody has to tell us, we know, then how do you get to become rich dirt? How do you cultivate a heart that will produce a great yield for God's kingdom? So the first soil is so hard, the seed laid on top of it, and the birds ate it. So the seed is the word, and basically, in this example, it's wasted. There are some people whose hearts are so hard that the Christian message just cannot enter. This, a lot of times, is due to their lack of interest, and their lack of interest comes from their failure to recognize the importance of Christianity and the message. Christianity fails to make an impact on people, not because they're hostile, but sometimes it's just because they're indifferent. There's no yield or production as a result of the planting. The second soil mentioned is rocky. Rocky soil appears fertile, but the rocks are covered with a fine layer of shallow soil. And in this patch of land, the seed soon, as it's hit by the sun, withers. In other words, you've done the work, but you only get half the results at best, or you get short-term results. If the word is not planted deep when the sun comes up, also known as bad times, trials and tribulations, we can't stand the heat. So we wither under the stresses of life and we don't produce any crop. Or if there's any rain or the slightest shift in the soil, you find yourself between a rock and a hard place. Y'all have heard that one. Or this is the other situation we find ourselves in. It's easier to begin a thing 
than to finish it. People are attracted to Christianity, but never, but it never gets beyond the surface of their hearts. An evangelist said, we have learned that it takes 5% effort to win a person to Christ and 95% to keep them in Christ and growing into maturity in the church. Next, we've got that seed planted in thorns. Who are your thor thorny plants? People, places, or situations. Last week, Brian talked about strange folks in our community. Now, I'm going to tell you, I love a good strange person. It keeps it interesting. A good strange person to me, though, is a person that is, is maybe the opposite of you. I'm more of a planner. I love having a spontaneous person around me. One example is my sister. I hope she's not tuning in. I'm getting ready to talk about you, Crystal. Um, she's spontaneous, and she has a job where it, 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 she's a nurse, and it can be sad sometimes. One day she called me up. She said, I'm sad about work, but everybody's happy at Disney. You want to go? <laughs> I said, Eric, gas up the car. We're going to Disney. Then she called me up and said, I want Anthony, that's my son, to come, and his two children. So we all loaded up in the car and had a great uh, Disney vacation. That's, that's good, good strange for me. But there are other folks in our lives that we need to really reevaluate. They can choke the joy out of any situation. You hit the lotto for a million dollars, they want to remind you that the government's going to take 25%. Okay, I only hit the lotto for $750,000. That's all right. Or every step you take toward next, the next level in spiritual growth, they're right there behind you talking about what you used to do in the good old days. I know what I used to do in the good old days because I was there too. But I'm continuing, though, to go forward and grow with God. But because we're surrounded by these thorns and we're not deep-rooted ourselves, we can't fully bloom or produce a bountiful harvest. But it's easy to blame it on other people, but sometimes we're our own worst enemy. We pack our lives with so many interests, errands, Zoom meetings, trying to raise these perfect, well-dressed children, keep our houses clean, our lawns manicured, and then at the end of the day, there's no time for reading the word or for praying to God. Imagine not having the time to ask the God of all power to come in and handle your situation. Thorns, those are thorns. Lastly, Jesus teaches about good soil, good, clean, and deep soil. At verse 8, he says, other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. Upon growing and increasing, the seed produced one, in one case, a yield of 30 to 1, in another case, a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case, a yield of 100 to 1. So what we have to see in this parable is that the sower is spreading the word generously. Are we ready to receive it? The harvest is bountiful because our God is bountiful and sowing without measure. But what we have to remember is that while we may be hard or we can be hard or thorny or unyielding and the world can be threatening, but God, but God's word of grace will be fruitful if we don't harden our hearts and work daily, daily, did I say daily, to become good soil. Considering that we're focusing on stewardship this month, we are looking for ways to go fully UP, up, to unleash our potential. How can we be good stewards of the word that the sower has so generously sown in us? This parable doesn't necessarily tell us how to become good soil, 
but I've got some ideas on how to cultivate or condition our hearts to be soft and pliable and ready to receive the word in order to produce an abundant crop. If we want to benefit from God's word and allow it to change our lives and condition our soil, we've got to do three things. First, the parable says we have to hear it. And in order to hear it, we have to listen. Isn't that how the parable began? Jesus said, listen. So most of you have heard that saying about how we listen to respond to the person talking and we don't necessarily listen to hear or comprehend what they're saying. We're, we're listening so we're ready to respond. We're not really listening to receive from that other person. We're getting ready to tell them what we think about that situation. And then there's that other thing about two ears and one mouth so we can listen more than we talk. So after we hear the word, we have to receive it. And by that, I mean take it into your minds. You know, your eye, if there's a foreign object coming at your eye, it's going to automatically close, right? It's a reflex action. Well, when the mind hears something that it doesn't want to hear, it closes. So I'm going to tell on myself, my husband was, has said to me over the uh, 36 years of our marriage, every so often he'll say, Paula, and when the way he says it, I know my mind starts closing a little bit already, <laughs> the way he says it. And he'll say, it's, we're going to have to go on an austerity, austerity budget. Oh, boy, I'm really not hearing that. My mind slams shut, right? But over the years, I finally got it. Um, and just like medicine, that we take that tastes bad, that's good for us. We have to learn to let that truth come into our minds, even though we don't like what we're hearing. That's what we have to take, think about the word. Sometimes you will feel worse before you feel better, but that's what you have to do to get into condition. So after you hear the word and after you receive the word, then thirdly, we've got to put that word into action. The yield is the, in the parable is 30, 60, and 100 times. Yields like that don't just happen. It takes work. To condition a soil, a lot of times you have to add additives, as, as Pastor Brian showed us in the children's moment. So a soil conditioner is something that's added to the soil to improve its condition or its fertility. Soil conditioners can be used to improve poor soils or to rebuild soils which have been damaged by improper soil management, also known as life. They can make poor soils more usable and can be used to maintain. So no matter where you are, even if you are good soil, you need to maintain your peak condition. So what are some of the additives for Christians for, their, for our soul or heart conditioning? Do missions work. Participate in a mission project or join a mission team when we're able to travel again. If you ask anyone who's ever been on a mission trip, they'll tell you that their lives were enriched by their service. Join a small group or a devotional group. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens a friend. You need to be part of a group of people that will hold you accountable, who can help you grow in love, a place where you can read the word and share what it means to you. And as you share with each other, even though your interpretations of how you read that word may not totally jive, you have to have a safe place to grow in God. So join a, a small group or a devotional group. Join a prayer group. You can never have enough people praying for you and with you. And if you have the gift of prayer, you need to be part of our prayer source. People will feel your, feel your prayers because you know you felt people's prayers for you. Fourthly, you can visit the sick 
when we get back to visiting. But right now, you can pick up the phone. Send a card, as Linda mentioned earlier. You need to feed the poor. We support the Lawrenceville Co-op. You need to witness against injustice. And as you interact with your accountability groups, with people in need and a hurting world, your soil is becoming richer, more nutrient dense, and more productive. You're sharing the word and love of God with a world piece by piece, person by person, and your yield multiplies even if you don't see it. You may never know where your roots go, but you have to do the work anyway because the harvest is sure. The harvest is sure because we worship a God, a sower, who generously sows seed. Think about what the people sitting there heard that day. They didn't have a chance to study each word, to reflect on it. Remember I said the parable was only six verses, and they probably looked around. What did he say? But what would have stood out to them? Our God sows even when God knows there's a chance of failure. He sows anyway. And there were failures at different stages of the growth as we've gone through. First, the seeds didn't germinate. The second batch withered away in the early stages. And the third batch grew but produced no fruit. But because our God sows so generously, we are assured of the harvest. So don't get tired. Don't get tired. That's what the crowd heard. Don't get tired. The crowd heard, don't despair. Your labor is not wasted. I know these are strange times and the world is threatening and your neighbors can be costed. But Galatians 6, 9 says, let's not get tired of doing good because in time, in time, we'll have a harvest if we don't give up. Let us pray. God of the word, in this parable, you showed us how your word can take root in our lives and hearts and help us to grow as your people and to spread your love to a suffering world. Nurture the seed, condition the soil, and help us to be good stewards of your mighty gifts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> We're here to till, sow, and spread the good word.
May the God of all peace and all joy fill you with his love so that you can feel free to take it to the streets. No more running. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 